Wir bleiben beim Stichwort Regenwaldsoja. Wir alle kennen Brasilien als das Land, in dem Regenwald abgeholzt wird, weil Soja angebaut wird. Und die Agrarindustrie boomt in Brasilien. Immer mehr Flächen werden stillgelegt, aus dem Wald genommen und werden. Dort wird Soja angebaut, dort werden Rinder gemessen, dort gibt es Hühnerfabriken, die größer sind als die, die wir im Emsland haben und in Wies um die Ize herum. Aber hier auf der Bühne ist eine Frau, die Ihnen sagen wird, es gibt auch in Brasilien eine andere Landwirtschaft, eine regionale Landwirtschaft, eine, die die Hungernden ernährt, eine, die die Schulkinder ernährt und eine, die nicht gigantische Mengen Soja auf den Weltmarkt bringt. Und das ist Daniel Schmidt-Peter. Da. Daniel Schmidt-Peter, hallo, herzlich willkommen. Also ich habe das mal geübt, auf Brasilianisch heißt das Seja Wem Vida, Daniel. Und ihr könnt mal alle zusammen üben, auf Brasilianisch, alles gut, tu do bem. Könnt ihr das? Okay, alle zusammen, eins, zwei, drei. Okay, alles gut, alles gut, nur dann, wenn die Politik auf unsere Forderung achtet. Aber noch ein paar Worte zu dir, Daniele, damit alle anderen auch wissen, wer du eigentlich bist. Daniele ist eine junge Landwirtin aus dem Bundesstaat Rio Grande do Sul in Brasilien und ist selber auf einem Ökohof groß geworden. Der mit Unterstützung von CAPA, das ist eine Kleinbauernorganisation in Brasilien, erstmal überhaupt an den Markt gekommen ist und überleben konnte. Heute arbeitet Daniel mit Peter selber für CAPA und setzt sich ein für ein Nullhungerprogramm in Brasilien. Immer noch ein Riesenthema für regionale und ökologische Landwirtschaft im Lande der Cash Crops. Herzlich willkommen, Daniel mit Peter, du hast die Bühne. Danke. Guten Tag. So, dear Al, my name is Daniel Schmidt-Peter and I come from the southern region of Brazil and for me it's a pleasure to be here and to speak for you all about the experience we have in our country, Brazil. So, I work for CAPA, the support center for small farmers, a non-governmental organization founded by the Evangelical Church of Lutheran Confession in Brazil, also a partner of Bread for the World. So, yeah. <laughs> so CAPA was founded as a reaction to the Green Revolution, which was pushing away the smallholders from the countryside, with a new model of agriculture being put into practice. I come from a family of small farmers and my family works with agroecology. After experiencing the labor of tobacco and the risk of working with pesticides, my family decided to change the way of production. Yeah! Encouraged also from the agroecology model that CAPA presented to them. So, in Brazil, the family farming is responsible for 70% of the food production. But still, family farming continues to face challenges. The, group, the current agricultural model contributes more and more to the concentration of land and monocropping. However, also, sorry, also Brazil is the largest consumer of pesticides in the world. The average of pesticides consumed per person is around five liters per year. And it is clear that this consume is not a consequence of family farming, but a result of the agribusiness of soybeans production and the investment in big companies of genetically modified seeds, or GMO. However, I came here today to give a positive input about the changes that we are experiencing in Brazil related to food production and support for the small farmers. Through the organization of the civil society addressing the needs, especially in the rural areas, the federal government of Brazil developed 
two new state policies of institutional market. The first one, the school's feeding program, buys the production of smallholder farmers and distributes for school feeding. At least 30% of the food for school feeding has to be bought from the family farmers, especially organic products that can have an increase of 30% at the final price paid to the farmers. The introduction of organic food in the school's feeding program promotes food education as well as open ways for new consumers. It also promotes an exchange between rural and urban areas. Children at school can have the opportunity of contact with the farmers and also they can know from where the food they are eating comes. The second program is the Zero Hunger Program and is a specific, a specific policy for, to fight hunger and for commercialization of smallholder products. The program universalizes the purchase of food from smallholder farmers in different regions of the country with the simultaneous donation to the local social programs of food security. With the criteria of food sovereignty, the Zero Hunger Program guarantees the access of nutritive food for poor people in the urban communities because it prioritizes the commercialization of products from an agroecological basis, breaking the paradigm that the access to organic food is a reality only for the rich people. Hey. This program also recognizes and brings all people involved as active in the process, developing citizenship, also helping to establish relationship among civil society, government, small farmers and consumers, increasing the solidarity between the urban and rural areas. These two programs are local alternatives to face hunger, recognizing and valuing the potential of family farming in the region, expanding the ecological production and integrating communities historically marginalized from development processes, like the Quilombolas, descendants of slaves, agrarian reform settlers, and fishermen. At the same time, the program valorizes and includes women, the principal responsible for food production in the rural areas. The commercialization for the federal programs guarantees market for the farmers, fair prices, and guarantee of payment, increasing the rural family's income. In consequence of these programs, the rural areas in Brazil are revitalized and the agrobiodiversity has been conserved. The smallholders are encouraged to continue working to produce food as they have the guarantee of market. This program is showing us that it's not investment in big companies, concentration of land or production of soy and tobacco for exportation that can overcome poverty and face hunger. Clearly, as smallholders in Brazil, we don't need the soybeans exports to Europe. We have much better alternatives. In Brazil, in Brazil, we have seen that only the investment in food production with engagement of civil society can be a chance to include people and overcome the reality of poverty in the world. In Brazil, the smallholder farmers are feeding the poor. It is so nice that we, all of us have come together here to push for different agriculture policies that really focus in the needs of family farmers, consumers, the poor 
and the environment. I hope that Germany and the European Union can learn from our experience. I thank the Brad for the world, for the opportunity to be here and speak to all of you. And let's move, let's invest in smallholder farmers and let's move to food sovereignty. Yeah. Herzlichen Dank, Daniele Schmidt-Peter von Papa. Herzlichen Dank, Daniele Schmidt-Peter, für all diejenigen, die in Brasilien zeigen, dass eine kleinbäuerliche Landwirtschaft das Land ernähren kann und zeigen kann, dass die Kleinbauern die Hungernden ernähren können und dass nicht Agrarmittel über den Ozean geschickt werden müssen, hierhin, um hier viel zu viele Hühner und Schweine zu füttern. Bleibt